and welcome back to Stanley Boy Reviews. I'm your host, Stanley. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out my channel where I like to talk about your favorite movies and sometimes my favorite movies as well. Thanks for stopping by. I've noticed lately at random, I've sort of dropped the Children of the Corn series by name here and there. I've yet to review a Children of the Corn film. I always thought the first one I would get to would be my favorite of the bunch, part four, The Gathering, starring a young Naomi Watts. But what do you know? A brand new one just came out theatrically. Children of the Corn. What? So I'm seated. You take a seat. Go grab your harvesting sites, your sickles, some duct tape, because I promise you're probably going to want it or need it at one point to wrap around your face because yes, it's not good. <laughs> Let's go to the cornfields. I won't lie to you because I used to tell the weirdest lies just to hear myself lie. I used to tell people I was born on an airplane and that my mom dated Kurt Russell. But I like some of the Children of the Corn movies. I'm not kidding. I'm not even talking the first one. I think the first one is a little boring. <laughs> the Gathering is my favorite. Trust me, a glowing review is on the horizon. The third one, Urban Harvest, is also a fun, gory time. There's also Runaway, which is, I believe, the ninth entry in the series that is a pretty good follow-up to the first movie. And oh, there's also The Final Sacrifice, the sequel to the OG that came out in 1993. And that was the last one to actually receive a theatrical release until this one. And this one, might I also add, is the second remake of the original. The first remake came out in 2009 and was a sci-fi original. And that one was based more so on the short story written by Stephen King, yes, we should not forget that he is the one to blame for all of this mess. <laughs> and while it was more so related to that original short story, it was really terrible. So cut to early 2020 when writer-director Kurt Wimmer came up with the idea to once again reboot this series. Keep in mind, we have already received eight sequels and a remake, and he wanted to do another one, only this time a new one that producer Lucas Foster would say, and I quote, would have nothing to do with the original. <laughs> so basically, another sequel. Principal photography took place in New South Wales in March of 2020 and finished in early June and premiered at a screening in October of the same year. And then nothing. Shudder acquired the rights. Hi, Shudder along with RLJE Films, but the movie would remain shelved for another three years. <laughs> and then come March of 2023, it would receive a very limited theatrical release and then it would get dropped on Shudder, but that didn't happen. So just last night, I caved and paid $6.99 to watch this in the comfort of my own living room. I have the AMC Stubbs membership, and while it was playing theatrically, I had bought tickets on two separate occasions to go see this film. And each time, something told me not to go. And I didn't. And that was with an AMC Stubbs membership. So anyways, let's get this over with because I already wish that I would have just talked about Children of the Corn 4. <laughs> Oh, and the Rotten Tomato score is 12%. This is officially the lowest scored movie I have ever reviewed. You're welcome. Children of the Corn 2023, or 2020, is about a high school girl named Bo, who is trying to leave her small town in Nebraska behind so she can attend college to become a biologist or some sh I don't know. At the same time, her father and the rest of the adults are in the process of taking part of a huge payout due to their dying corn crops. And this is not settling with the younger generation of Rylestone, particularly Eden, who is the leader of said younger generation. <laughs> and she takes it upon herself to organize the slaughter of all the moms and dads of the town and feed them to the monster in the cornfield so she could become the red queen of the corn. Did any of that compute with any of you? Because that's what this movie's about. This is the reboot of the Children of the Corn series. But I'm telling you now, it's f***ing stupid. I'm not usually one to criticize the performances of any child because honestly, Kid actors. But I wish the director would have stepped in and directed the children in this movie, particularly the little lead actress, because I read her biography and she's been in some pretty good stuff, so it seems. I wasn't sure what kind of movie I was supposed to be watching. I found myself snickering a lot. I wasn't sure if this was a comedy or if this was a horror movie. I can help with your pain. <laughs> Out of the 37 Children of the Corn movies, Eden was by far the least frightening of any of the leaders. Brace yourself. 
And I was really looking forward to having a little girl being the one to wield the sickle. And this goes for the entire cast. The adults were no better actors than the children. Thankfully, the film had Elena Camporis, the lead actress who played Bo, made do with what she was given. And although this movie is not good, she was. And I applaud her for making the most out of her terribly written role. She's actually the only reason to watch this movie. <laughs> The effects, which were also something I was looking forward to, are by a group called Digital Domain, who also executive produced this movie. And even for 2020, back when this was filmed, you would imagine some thought to be put into effects. But the effects look pretty cheap, and this movie kind of makes even the 2009 sci-fi film look like an Oscar contender. <laughs> and I'm so sorry, but how f dare you throw us that tree creature and call it he who walks behind the rose or i'm sorry he who walks which is how they stupidly refer to the demon in the cornfields and they expected us to be pleased with that so so bad i couldn't even believe the audacity the story moved at a snail's pace the gore effects were pulled out of the ass of some extra on the set and i'm so impressed that this reboot or remake was not some sort of subtitle and just given to us as some sort of sequel like it's kind of insulting it didn't bring anything new to the series the horror genre. <laughs> if you want to watch a good Children of the Corn movie, watch the sequels that some might say are awful, but this one is ugh, not good. The cool thing about part four, and this is the last thing I'll say about it until I review it, you don't have to see any of the other ones before or any of the other ones after to understand it or appreciate it. That's what I like about it. Anyway, that's all. So yeah, on Stanny Sabometer, I give this stale ass kernel one stab. <laughs> I don't see myself recommending this to anybody. I honestly am trying to think of an excuse to call Amazon and get my $6.99 back. And again, you're talking to someone who owns all of these movies, all of them, even the really, really terrible ones. And this is one that I cannot see myself forking over any amount of money to own ever. <laughs> And it makes me more sad that Kurt Wimmer was not thinking of any Children of the Corn fan, the one that exists. And that's not even me when he made this movie. <laughs> anyway, guys, what did you think? Do you plan to watch Children of the Corn? Did you watch Children of the Corn? Let me know what you think in the comments. And don't forget, I am on social media. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And do not forget to subscribe. subscribe. And I'll be back next week. Have a great, great week. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>